Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. With the Congress and the BJP quarrelling over Vallabhai Patel, how do scholars assess India's first Deputy Prime Minister and his role in history? That's the key subject I shall discuss today with one of his most highly regarded biographers, Raj Mohan Gandhi. Professor Gandhi, let's start with Vallabhai Patel's relationship with Congress. He joined the party somewhere around 1917 mm -hmm. and over the next 33 years till his death in 1950, he was a member of the party. Would it be right to say that he dedicated his life to the Congress party? Yes, uh, it would be absolutely true and he would himself have uh, used those very words to say that. Yeah. Now, Patel was of course one of Gandhi's two closest lieutenants, yeah. the other was Jawaharlal Nehru. But how critical was Patel to the organization of the Congress party? Utterly critical, uh, not only in his state of Gujarat but across India. He, he ran the party in the latter years especially of his life. He ran the party before Quit India, after Quit India, uh, before that the Badoli Satyagraha. So he was above all the, the great organizer of the Congress and everybody accepted that. Nehru accepted that, Azad accepted it, Gandhi uh, accepted it, that every, every biographer historian would, would accept that. So during his lifetime, yeah. would Patel have taken pride in saying, I am a congressman? Oh yes, I, he, he, he said that with pride again and again, sure. So Congress was actually his identity. It was, but then of course the Congress of that time and the Congress of today, these are two different things. In 1947, Mahatma Gandhi suggested that India's first Prime Minister after independence should be Jawaharlal Nehru rather than Patel because he thought Nehru was better suited to the job. What were the reasons that brought Gandhi to that conclusion? Uh, Nehru was 14 years younger than Patel. Uh, Patel, of course, was also unwell at this time. We're talking about the mid-40s. He had two very uh, uh, difficult terms of imprisonment when his he health worsened. So the health factor and the age factor. And then Nehru had this uh, international appeal also. Uh, the youth of India also loved him at the time. The left in India also loved him. You might say that the minorities perhaps trusted him more than they did Sadar Patel. At one point in time, Gandhi is quoted as saying that after I'm gone, Jawaharlal will speak my language. Yes. Did that play a role in influencing Gandhi to choose Nehru rather than Patel? I'm not sure. By the way, Gandhi was speaking about Nehru as his successor, not just when it came to the Prime Ministership of India, but much earlier in, in 42, even in the mid-30s, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru is, going to, is the rightful helmsman for the future, is what he said in 1934. So that Nehru was to be the successor was in Gandhi's mind and was accepted by most people in the Congress and outside the Congress in the country and also by Vallabhai Patel at the time. So the succession actually had been worked out well before 47, some yes. 15 years earlier. Yes, indeed. And it was something that Vallabhai Patel was fully conscious of and aware of. Aware of. Uh, it is true that he was uh, spoken of as a possible president of the Indian National Congress in 46. Indeed, many Congress committees in various parts of India proposed his name. Uh, and uh, Kripalani was another name proposed at the time. Uh, Maulana Azad wanted to continue, but uh, at Gandhi's instance, uh, Nehru's name was proposed at the last minute and everybody else withdrew their names. If Gandhi hadn't intervened, and I know that counterfactual questions yeah. are sometimes unfair, yeah. but if Gandhi hadn't intervened and the choice was left to the Congress party itself, could Patel rather than Nehru have been the first Prime Minister of India? We can't be sure of that. Certainly, the Congress uh, provincial committees wanted Patel as the president of the Congress party at that time. But even many of those who wanted him as president said afterward, like Dwarka Prasad Mishra who was very active in promoting his name as Congress president, that when we presented uh, uh, Patel's name, uh, put that name forward, we still wanted Nehru as the first prime minister. But we, I, I can't say what the Congress party wanted at the time, but I think as far as the people of India at the time were concerned, Nehru was their clear choice. Nehru was the clear choice of the people of India. Yeah, 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 it was. Now, speaking some 25 years later, yeah. Raja Gopalachari, who also happens to be your maternal yeah. grandfather, yeah. said, and I'm quoting, yeah. undoubtedly it would have been better if Nehru had been asked to be foreign minister and Patel made the prime minister. As Patel's biographer, yeah. as Raja Gopalachari's grandson, would you agree with your grandfather or would you disagree? Uh, uh, I would also first point out before answering the question that Rajaji said this when Indira Gandhi was prime minister. He did not say this uh, when, during Nehru's prime ministership or for many years thereafter. So he said it in the light of what followed Nehru. And in the light of his strong opposition to Indira Gandhi's government. 
So we have to take that uh, criticism in context. I think the important thing to ask is, uh, why did Rajaji not say that in the 50s or the 60s? Why did he say it so late in the day? All right. In other words, he said it because of a particular context. Yes. And that context made him believe that if Nehru hadn't been, Indra wouldn't have been either. Yeah. And his opposition to Indra determined it. That's it. Uh, this does not mean that Patel would not have made a great prime minister. He might have made a very great prime minister. He might have made even a better prime minister than Nehru. The, the, you know, others can have a debate on this. The important thing no, to note, though, that this is actually uh, a, a, not a, a, a reasonable argument because Patel was too ill and too old to carry the burden of the prime ministership at that time. Yes, he might have been prime minister for a year or two. And he might have done great things, but as I said. Uh, the, the popular opinion, uh, apart from Gandhi's opinion, was really that Nehru uh, was to be the Prime Minister. Of course, the other thing that's also true yeah. is that Patel frequently said that the decision to make Nehru Prime Minister was the correct and right one. Yeah. And secondly, after the Mahatma died, Patel frequently referred to Nehru in public as my leader. So does that prove that, in fact, Patel had no sense of anguish, no rancor. He readily accepted that Nehru should be Prime Minister and he didn't feel he'd been hard done by. This is the remarkable thing about the man. Many people wanted him to be the president and if he had been the Congress president, it's possible that he might have been asked to be the first vice chairman of the executive council. This was the government before uh, Free India's government came. Uh, some kind of prime minister. But it, the remarkable thing is he never expressed any kind of resentment, unhappiness, bitterness. It, it shows the character of the man. He never, and he has again and again said that he was, he felt that the choice was the right one. Let's try and discuss a little the relationship between Jawaharlal Nehru and Vallabhai Patel. They had fairly substantial differences on how powerful the Prime Minister should be. They differed on issues like Kashmir, China, Tibet, to just take those sure. three. Was Nehru's idea of India substantially different to Patel's? Uh, I would not say so. Yes. Significant differences, yes. Uh, personality differences, many. Uh, arguments, uh, even heated exchanges, frequently. But the two work together as a team. Uh, they, there is no mention of, uh, there is no evidence of any statement uh, by Patel to anybody during those three years of, of uh, Patel as Deputy Prime Minister, Nehru as Prime Minister, that, oh, I wish Nehru had not been the Prime Minister. In fact, during that three-year period, Nehru once said to Patel, things are becoming very difficult for me. I want to step aside and I want you to be the Prime Minister. February 1950 from your book. And Patel said, no, no, you, uh, the country needs you, country wants you. In other words, Nehru wanted at one point in February 1950 yeah. to resign and Patel was the one who said, no, definitely not. Uh, that is indeed correct. The question that's been discussed today and in some senses it's become a controversial question is did the two have different attitudes towards India's Muslim minority? And I want to put that to you. Did they look upon them Muslims in different ways? Did they have a different way of perceiving and understanding them? In some, some ways, yes. Uh, it also uh, was a result of uh, their different upbringing and where they were raised and how they were raised, uh, where they grew up, where they had their early years. Uh, Jawaharlal Nehru had many Muslim friends in Allahabad. Uh, Vallabhai Patel in his part of uh, Kheda district in Gujarat and afterwards in Ahmedabad, he had very few Muslim associates and, and friends. Uh, he did not know Muslim India as, as, as closely as, as, as Nehru did. And uh, Sardar Patel was also an unashamed defender of Hindu interests. He felt that Hindu interests were a very important part of India's interests and had to be robustly defended. And he, he was also, in the debate, I'm now talking about the 30s and the 40s, in the debates between the Muslim League and its demand for partition in Pakistan, uh, and the Congress unwillingness at that time to concede that demand, uh, Sardar Patel was a very strong defender of the unity of India, as, as was Nehru. Uh, but Sardar Patel was, uh, one might say, he was the Hindu face of Indian nationalism under the Congress umbrella. Nehru was the secular and the global face of Indian nationalism under the same umbrella, but they stayed together. They might have had different constituencies, but they were together. You're making a very important point. You're actually also suggesting, aren't you, that it was Allahabad when Nehru was born, Harrow and Cambridge were his educated, yeah, yeah. that in a sense meant that he was more at ease with Muslims, he had better social relations with Muslims. Correct. Patel grew up in a different environment, yes. he had a different background. Yeah. That doesn't make him communal, but it did mean that his attitude was different. That, that, is, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. You, I want to quote from your book. You say, Vallabhai's was a Hindu heart. He did not move in the Muslims' world and they did not move in his. 
Vallabhai never tried or claimed to represent Muslims and he found it natural to speak as a Hindu. You wouldn't have used those words to describe Nehru. The fact that they, you use them to describe Patel yeah. suggests, I suppose, the measure of the difference in their attitude to Muslims. Yes, yes, indeed. And the different contexts in which they were raised. But in no sense of the word was Patel prejudiced against Muslims. Am I right in that conclusion? He was, uh, as he had his sympathies with the Hindus in the Sikhs, in the 47 killings, he had his sympathies with the Hindus in the Sikhs, as, as many people in India had. Uh, but as Home Minister, and as a Home Minister operating out of Delhi, he did his utmost to protect Muslim lives in Delhi. That is a very important part of history. When it came to the job he had to do, yeah. he was impartial and secular. Yes, yes, absolutely so. So he, he had a Hindu heart, but he ruled with an impartial hand. And that is very much a point you make in your book. Before I take a break, let's come to the Congress Party and the way it's looked back on Patel. Would you say that 63 years after his death, the Congress Party is guilty of either forgetting Vallabhai Patel or at least relegating him behind the Nehru Gandhi family? Sadly, that is true. Uh, I wouldn't say the Congress Party forgot him. He was too big to be forgotten. But the Congress Party certainly did not give enough uh, time, enough uh, attention, uh, did not make more of him uh, than, than it did. How telling is the fact that Patel only got the Bharat Ratna 41 years after his death, after Jawaharlal Nehru, after Indira Gandhi, and coincidentally, at the same time as Rajiv Gandhi. And many say, perhaps he only got it because Rajiv had to be given it. How telling is that? I, well, it is certainly... Well, let me say this. The Bharat Ratna was only instituted after Patel had died. So it couldn't have been given to him? Couldn't have been given to him uh, when he was alive. The first people who got it were Rajagopalachari, Dr. Radhakrishnan and C.V. Raman in the mid 50s that's a, and I, as far as I know I could be wrong as far as I know he was the very first to be given it posthumously all the others were still alive when they received it so that it, it, in fact when you know it, he it, and Rajiv together got it posthumously okay, okay. Or Rajiv had just died he just died so uh, but uh, yes if it was if, if, if it had been decided that posthumous awards of the Bharat Ratna also had to be instituted then Sadha Patel should have been the first to have been given it so there's no necessary automatic conclusion that by delay, delaying it for 41 years, there was some prejudice against him. But I think it has to be acknowledged that for a long time, quite apart from the Bharat Ratna thing, Sadar Patel was not made much of by Congress governments. So that has to be acknowledged. In fact, you quote in your book yeah. from then President Rajendra Prashad, who yeah. said as far back as 1959, yeah. more than 50 years ago, that there is today an India to think and talk about is very largely due to Sardar Patel's statesmanship and firm administration. Yeah. Yet, we are apt to ignore him, which suggests that the ignoring of Patel began even when Nehru was alive. Yes, sadly that is true. Now, Nehru was succeeded by Indra, Sanjay, Rajiv, Sonia and now Rahul Gandhi. Patel's children neither inherited nor shared nor benefited from the power he had. Is that just the way things worked out? Or does it tell you something very important about Nehru and Patel? Uh, I'm not as good, close a student of Nehru's life as I am of Patel's life. Uh, Patel was very clear that his son and his daughter should not benefit in any pecuniary way or in any other political way from his great influential position that he held. Um, did Nehru hold that line as, as strongly? Uh, well, obviously, when it came to the presidentship of the International Congress, I think in the late 50s, uh, 